Hi friends, today we're doing Unit 10, Lesson 1, Introduction to Living in Colonial America. We're going to start by going over the key vocabulary words that you'll be hearing in today's reading. Our first word is alarmed, which means shocked, disturbed, or frightened. Our next word is climate, the usual weather conditions of an area over a long period of time. Our next word is colony, an area settled by a group of people from another country that remains connected to the newly settled area and its people. Our next word is established, set up, started, or created. Then we have the term false start, which means repeated failures at attempting to start something. Then we have the word plantations, large farms or estates in warm climates, usually growing a large single crop. And our last word is reliant, dependent upon or counting on someone or something for support. We are now going to move into today's reading. By 1542, Spanish explorers had claimed a large part of South America, all of Central America, and parts of North America. This did not go unnoticed by the kings and queens of England, France, Portugal, and the Netherlands. They, too, sent their explorers off to the New World to claim land and riches for their homelands. Spain had already conquered much of Central and South America, so other European nations concentrated on claiming parts of North America. Before long, there was a race to claim land for these European kings and queens. The settlement and eventual colonization of this part of the New World had begun. Soon, European countries realized that not only could they explore the land for new riches, but they could trade with the people who were already living there. European traders traveled to North America to exchange goods with Native Americans. As a result, some Native Americans learned to speak a little French or English. In turn, many Europeans learned to speak native languages such as Algonquin as well. In the late 1500s, England was becoming more and more alarmed, or shocked and disturbed, at how much land the Spanish were claiming in what is now called Central South America. The Spanish were not only gaining land, they were becoming wealthier too. It was time for the English to take action. In the 1580s, an English explorer named Sir Walter Riley set off to explore parts of North America. During this expedition, he landed on an island called Roanoke Island off the coast of what is now the state of North Carolina. Riley returned home eager to claim this land for England. In 1585, he persuaded Queen Elizabeth I to allow him to send a group of settlers to Roanoke Island. Queen Elizabeth agreed. However, when the settlers got there, they found it difficult to survive in this new land. This was especially true in the winter because they weren't able to plant crops. When the settlers ran out of food, many people starved to death. As soon as they could, the, the demoralized settlers returned to England. <clears throat> In April 1587, the English made a second attempt to settle on Roanoke Island. This time, a man named John White led more than 100 men, women, and children, including his own daughter, Eleanor Dare, and her husband to establish a colony in the New World. Once again, the settlers faced the same challenges, and their supplies ran low. However, this time, only John White and a small crew sailed back to England for supplies, while the others remained in the colony. Just nine days before he returned to England, his daughter had a baby boy, baby girl, and named her Virginia Dare. White's granddaughter was the first English baby born in the New World. When White and his crew arrived back in England, he learned that the country was at war with Spain and he would not be allowed to return to Roanoke Island. It was not until 1590 that he was able to take a ship and return to the colony. When White finally arrived back on Roanoke Island, what do you think he found? Sadly, he found nothing. Well, the island was still there, along with some abandoned dwellings, but the colonists were nowhere to be found. White's only clue to where the colonists may have gone was the word Croatan carved into one tree trunk and the letter C-R-O carved into another. Croatan was believed to be the name of an island about 50 miles south of Roanoke Island. John White thought the carving might have been a message that the settlers relocated to that island. John White tried to go to Croatan Island to find the colony, but a huge storm damaged his ship and forced the crew to return to England. White was never able to return to the New World again. The mystery of what happened to the English settlers remains unsolved today. Roanoke Island has become known as the Lost Colony. One reason many English 
many early English settlers struggled to survive was because they weren't prepared for how different their lives would be in this new land. It took several attempts before they figured out how to survive in a place where the climate, soil, landscape, plants, animals, and people were quite different from anything they had known before. Eventually, the colonists learned how to use the natural resources that were available to them, and they became less reliant on supplies from England. And so, after a number of difficult years and false starts, England eventually established small settlements and down the east coast of North America, up and down the east coast of North America. Initially, these settlements were nothing more than tiny villages. Over time, the villages became towns. By the 1700s, many of the towns had grown into cities that were centers of trade and industry. In the end, 13 successful English colonies were established in North America. As the 13 English colonies began to take shape, they were naturally divided into three distinct regions, the New England, Mid-Atlantic, and Southern regions. These regions were different from each other in many ways. For example, in New England, because of the colder climate, rocky terrain, and poor soil, it was difficult for the colonists to farm many crops. Instead, New England became known as a center for fishing, furs, timber, and shipbuilding. In the Middle Atlantic region, a wide variety of crops could be grown because of the milder climate and rich soil. As a result, agriculture, including cattle and wheat farming, became a successful way of life for many. In the warm, sprawling southern region, people created large farms called plantations, where they could grow large amounts of different crops such as rice and tobacco. People came to North America at different times and for many different reasons. Some came to get rich, whereas others came for religious reasons. Some hoped to escape poverty, and some were simply curious or adventurous. English monarchs played an important role in the establishment of the colonies, particularly Elizabeth I, James I, Charles I, Charles II, and George II. As we travel on our journey, we will refer to the regional map of colonial America, the Royal Portrait Gallery, and a timeline we will create together. So are you ready to go on a journey? Good. We are going to begin next time in Jamestown, Virginia. You may move on to Unit 10, Lesson 1, Google Form.